in the preceding video we had learnt how at the instance of Kansa the king of Mathura Akrur had come to invite Krishna and his family to Mathura to watch wrestling bouts. There was a hidden purpose. Kansa wanted to kill child who was born to destroy him. Krishna knew about the reality. He agreed to go with Akrur. However, another section of the population of Vrindavan, hearing the news of Krishna's departure, was dejected. The Brajwalas felt agitated and left out. They sighed in grief. Some of them, unable to bear the prospect of Krishna's absence, fainted. They were so upset, so lost in grief, that they were unaware of their odhanis slipping off, their bracelets sliding down and their buns shaking loose. Please note the description of a woman in distress in Viraha. Some of them sat in contemplation of their beloved, others sang songs in his praise and danced. They thought of his smile, his naughty glances, of his pranks and of the Maharas. They shed copious tears. They gathered in groups and talked about the impending tragedy. Blessed you are, O Creator, O Arbiter of our destiny, they said. However, you are unkind to us. You brought us and Krishna together, offered us his love and affection, yet long before we could have enjoyed his company to our satisfaction, you have decided to take him away. No that we have not had our fill at the fount of his love. We are thirsty for Krishna's love, for his company. O oh God, do not play with us as if we are children. It is unfair. You sent us Shamasundara, whose face shines like an emerald. His cheeks are soft like a new leaf, marked simile. His nose is sharp like a parrot's beak. We do not blame Akrur, we blame you, O God. You came here in Akrura's disguise. You are snatching the eyes you had blessed us with. How lovely. We used to look at Krishna with a steady gaze through these eyes. To take him away is not wise on your part. You should have refrained from this deceitful act. As far as that Sham Sundar is concerned, he wants to befriend strangers. But where has his affection for us evaporated? We gave up our husbands, our homes, our children to be his slaves. Today while we lament his departure, he has no time to come to us and offer consolation. The women in Mathura will be lucky tomorrow. No doubt Krishna is an obedient child. He listens to Nanda Baba, Maya Shoda and his teachers. However, the Mathura beauties are clever as well as cunning, said one of the gopis. They will entrance him with sweet words, shameless smiles, amorous bhav. They are city women. Problem continues till today. Why should Krishna return to village folks like us? Sakhi, this Akrur is in reality cruel, heartless and indifferent. While we are so unhappy, he is determined to take Krishna away. He has no words of consolation to offer us. He does not assure us of our beloved's return. Even Shamasundara, our own we called him, jumps into the chariot with delight. He does not glance at us even once. How selfish, how cruel. Why did we fall in love with him? We were idiots. Our cowherds 
they are foolish they are keen to depart as if they have never seen a festival they are least bothered about our sentiments our anger why have no we not been invited let us go and persuade krishna not to desert us we never let him be alone the unending nights we spent with him performing ras ras in his embraces looking at his smiling face amorous glances listening to his melodious voice his flute whispers in our ears passed away as if in a moment how shall we in his absence go across the ocean of virha on the shores of which he is deserting us how shall we live without him when he will never return at sunset smiling playing upon his flute chasing the cows playing pranks with his companions how do we forget his curly tresses the twinkle in his mischievous eye the garlands around his neck covered with the dust raised by the hooves of the cows and his chivalrous deeds all this same expressing their anguish in words to each other the gopis in their thoughts were holding krishna tight in their arms experiencing the joy of his contact the touch of his limbs and the fragrance of his lips they were quite agitated growing emotional without a trace of hesitation and reserve they cried o govinda he madhava he govinda loudly they wept spent the whole night waiting for the inevitable departure early next morning akrur climbed his chariot and set out for the journey towards mathura in separate chariots nand and his cowherd set out with milk ghee and curd as presents for kans the brajwalas could not let krishna leave without an attempt to dissuade him from going his smile pleased them they lost their voice so overpowered were they by emotion unblinking they gazed at him soaking in his charm and the bliss of his proximity krishna looked at them and sent word i shall return physically he never returned but he did live in their thoughts forever and his living with them made them immortal in the history of hindu religion and in the history of indian literature as the chariots moved away the gopis stood like statues till they could see the flags and the dust raised by the chariot wheels they hoped against hope that he would return however that was not to be some distance away on the banks of the yamuna the caravan stopped for rest and refreshments while taking a bath in the holy waters akrur had a vision of krishna and balaram sitting together in another world he wondered how that could be he had just left them sitting in the chariot raising his head above water he saw them still sitting where he had left them to clear his doubts he took a dip again his vision returned and he was blessed with the darshan of vishnu reclining on seshnag in kshir sagar his head in lakshmi's lap akrur realized that krishna had blessed him with a divine vision and that the visit to mathura would be auspicious in spite of all the machinations of kansa om namo bhagavate vasudevaya jai shri krishna jai shri krishna jai shri krishna